welcome to this little tutorial on one of the most iconic riffs in rock blues music of all times, Steve Ray Vaughan, Scuttle Button. I actually just discovered what that means, which is making gossip, water cooler talk or something like that. And uh, I have to admit, I have been working on this riff for basically all my life since the 90s. I feel old. Dreams are not I actually already shot this tutorial once, but then I went looking for new material and I found this new 4K restored stuff of Stevie Ray's playing some performances that made me decide that I was wrong on a couple of things. So I went back and shoot it again. And now I think, and I said it as a disclaimer for the title, which sound a little pretentious, but I think that I got as close as possible to how Steve Ray Vaughan used to play it, which is using two middle fingers. Sorry about that, but it's the truth. He does use both his middle fingers. That's actually almost the only finger he uses on his left hand. Let me know in the comments if I missed something, if you have a different opinion, I'm glad to confront with you because it's very interesting to find out exactly the way that Stevie Ray did it. Also, there's a full performance and the backing track available linked down in the description. Okay, let's see what he does with his left hand. As I said, he's using his middle finger. How? He's doing this thing. So he's basically doing everything with his middle finger. And if you watch closely on slow motion, you can see he just used this sliding fluid movement with his middle finger. And he combines it with legatos to make it a little easier. He cannot pick every note and it sounds even better. One of the things that people usually miss when playing this riff is this little embellishment it does on the A note. So it's not, but it's, which continues this little sliding movement that makes it so, you'll find the word for me. Let's take a look at what he does with his right hand now. He starts with a downstroke, another downstroke, so it's down, slide, down, middle finger, so it's going to be down, slide, down, middle finger. Then it goes on. So after the middle finger, it's a down stroke on the B string and then an up stroke on the D. That slides to the E at the fifth fret. This time he could have used the finger, but it doesn't look like from the footage. So I have to guess he's using alternate picking this time around. So, slide, up stroke, down stroke, pull off, okay? Then, starting from the second fret on the A note, always with the second finger, down stroke, slide to the B flat slide back to the A, pull off to the G note, then he plays the E note with an up stroke, and then one of the most unusual but effective things he does, he just skips the A string and plays the low E with another up stroke. 
It looks a little bit like a sweet picking, like economy picking, but it's not because it's actually skipping a string. This is not really easy. I think is helped by the way he moves his hand in a circular way. So he just skips the string. I will play the whole thing very slow for you so you can check out all the movements of the left and the right hand. Then he adds a chord which looks like an E major with a sharp 9, but I don't hear the third, the major third, so I have to guess that the first finger is here just to mute the G string. So what you actually hear is just the first two strings. Not sure if it's intentional, if he actually frets the first fret to obtain a G sharp, but that's not really important. It's important what we hear, which is this, just the two up G and D note. One important note on the right hand, this is on the contrary motion to the alternate picking. With alternate picking, it should have been like this. which sounds completely different from because both the low notes and the high notes have a much more powerful sound played this way but it's not alternate, I mean the alternate is reversed compared to the timing And one another little thing that I want to add is that his hand, his right hand is very fluid it doesn't stop, so sometimes it hits either the low strings at the end of the riff and the chord, it hits either the low strings or the high strings. Like this, or... And you can hear it in the record and on the live performances. On live performances it changes a few things, and I think it usually hits the low notes on that spot which actually restarts the motion of the alternate picking on the correct uh, time frame, like this. The only thing that's left is when the chord change. The chord change according to the 12 bar blues besides the last one. Usually on the blues the last change that happens in the chords is going from the 5 to the 4 and then back to the 1. In this case what Stevie Ray does, he goes from the 5, stays on the 5 for an extra bar and then goes directly into the 1, so there's no fourth chord. So when the chord change, a little bit of the ending of the fast riff changes as well. <laughs> To do the same thing, going to the 4 and to the 5, you either fret the, the bar to do the A chord a little bit before so you get the E note, and I think this is what he does, but you can also... So doing the riff exactly the same way and then going to the A chord. But sometimes in the record, when it goes to the A chord and to the B chord, the final 5 chord, it changes the string that comes right before the A and the B root note. I'll tell you how. So he plays the G again, especially when going to the B. the G note. When going to the A, the first time around and the second time around he does the regular riff, but in the end he does this. I don't know why, it's probably unintentional, it's just switching to the chord, but I think it's a nice little extra we can throw in there. 
So last thing I want to mention is that you can change a few things to adapt it to your play. The first thing, which is what I've been doing for a long time, is using only alternate picking. No finger, no middle finger. Which is also more polite. You can also reverse the ending picking stroke on the low E and going down stroke. Which is another thing that I've been doing for a long time. And the other thing is that doing everything with the second finger is very tricky. Because you have to move it around a lot and sometimes you just wish you can use the third like this. Which helps a little bit and sometimes I do it. Let me play the whole thing very slow for you. Thank you for watching this tutorial, I hope it was helpful, let me know down in the comments if you think I missed something or if you have a different perspective. Until the next time, ciao and please subscribe to the channel, ring the little bell and like the video. Ciao.